So we're going to go through our verse-by-verse -verse Bible study on Revelation. Usually before I start off verse-by-verse, verse, uh, at the first verse, first chapter, I always give an introduction about Revelation. Okay, so Revelation is a book in your Bible that is written by the author John. John is the author. Now, I want to give... Uh, I want to mention right here in our verse-by-verse -verse Bible study on Revelation that you'll notice the title of your book. It says, The Revelation of St. John the Divine. Now, some pious independent fundamental Baptists, they're going to say, no, it's not the revelation of St. John the Divine. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. So look at Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. Notice it says right here, the revelation of Jesus Christ. So you'll notice right here that since it says the revelation of Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ should be the one whose name is after the book of Revelation. But the problem with this teaching is that you got to realize that we do realize that Jesus Christ, that this is his revelation that he's giving to John. We recognize that. But we don't have to act like overtly pious and say, well, there's an error right here in the name of the book of your Bible because it's technically not revelation of St. John the Divine. It's a revelation of Jesus Christ. That's, you got to realize that sometimes when you look at the word of, it can be used where this one is actually the object sometimes. So this one we know, Revelation of Jesus Christ at chapter 1, verse 1, is the subject. This is Jesus Christ's revelation. When we say the revelation of St. John the Divine, John can be the object in this case, so we don't have to be overtly pious. Sometimes you'll notice that too. <coughs> Excuse me. Sometimes you'll notice in your Bible when it says the word of, and then there's a word after that. It does not technically mean that sometimes that the word after the word, the word after the word of, it has to be a subject all the time. So you'll notice that several times throughout your Bible. You'll see that. Sometimes you'll say the salvation of Jesus Christ or the salvation of God. Does that mean that God needs salvation, that he's a subject? No, sometimes... The word can be an object after that. Sometimes it could be an object after that. So, Revelation does not have to belong to John, but he's the object of it. He is the object of it. So we see right here, Revelation belongs to Jesus, but John becomes the object of this case. So there's nothing wrong with your King James Bible where it says the revelation of St. John the Divine. So notice right here that John is the author. We believe he wrote it sometime before A.D. 91 or A.D. 96. Now, the date is important. You might say, why is that? Because some scholars, <clears throat> what they want to do is that they want to put this at an earlier date. Why is that? They like to put this at an earlier date... so that the prophecies in the book of Revelation does not have to come out true. So that's what they want to do. So then, because they don't like uh, the date, what we believe is this, is that we believe that A.D. 91 to A.D. 96, which is the, uh, we believe that this was long after Nero, sometime at the reign of Domitian. <clears throat> So, for some of you who don't know much about history right here, if you look at the history of the early Christians during that time, they were suffering tremendous persecution under Nero. Now, some authors, what they want to do is that they want to put John at the timeline of Nero so that they can apply the fall of Jerusalem. So, we know that Jerusalem lost its capital and city during this timeline, see? Or sometimes slightly earlier. They want to make the book of Revelation applying to the first centuries, not in the future. That's very important to understand. The majority of churches, believe it or not, majority of churches or scholars 
they try to put revelation within the timeline of the first centuries. They don't like to put it in the timeline of the future. Because why does Satan want that? Because that way you get rid of prophecy at revelation. Yeah. And then you get of a book that is current event with today's going on on what's happening soon in the future. Yeah. So they want to apply all this during the timeline of the first centuries where Jerusalem fell. No, we believe that when it talks about Jerusalem falling to the Antichrist system, that's at the future. That did not happen under Nero in the fall of Jerusalem in the first centuries. We don't believe in that. There are uh, tr sources out there that says that John, he was uh, punished by Nero or some other uh, Roman emperor, and he was uh, isolated in the Isle of Patmos. So that's why they want to enforce John within the first century timeline around here so that they can put the fall of Jerusalem after the book of Revelation was written. But the simple answer is this, is that John, he may have been punished by Nero, but then Domitian just continued the punishment, see? So there's your simple answer right there. So he was under the punishment of two emperors. So you got to think of that possibility as well. Nevertheless, what we do know is this, is that uh, in the chronological order and timeline, we put it, around 91 to 96 AD. That's where we put it at. And some other highlights about Revelation is that because they don't like this book, there is a method where we use interpretation for this book that I want you to keep in mind. It is a pre-millennial objective. You have to put a pre-millennial. You might say, why pre-millennial? Pre-millennial, there is a difference with that one with post and amillennial. What are the differences, right? Okay, the difference is this. So millennium means a thousand years. Now, amillennial, they do not believe uh, in their millennial kingdom sometime in the future. There's no millennium. They are living in God's kingdom already right now. So in those lenses, that's why they'll interpret revelation as something that happened during the first century. We're already in the kingdom. Then you see post-millennial. Post-millennial, what they believe is we have to bring in God's kingdom. And that's like the majority of churches, you notice. That's why they want to uh, shoot up the offering plates, build bigger empires for their churches. <coughs> and then they're, they're mentioning about building up God's kingdom. And you got Rick Warren, Joel Osteen, stuff like that, saying that we're trying to bring God's kingdom here on earth. See, these guys are kingdom builders, kingdom bringers, and these people are post-millennial. Because post means after. See, it means after. Bringing in. So they believe Jesus Christ is going to come after their kingdom reign. So after their kingdom reign, they're going to bring in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ will say, what a good job. You guys did a wonderful job bringing the kingdom of God here on earth, so I'm going to finally come down. So that's post-millennial, after the millennium. Pre-millennial, we believe, is this. We don't believe the kingdoms of this world right now are being ruled by Christians or by God. This is under the devil system. That's what we believe in. So we believe pre-millennial, before the thousand years. We need the king of kings to bring his kingdom and set everything right. So that's what we believe in. Premillennial will also bring a pre-tribulation point of view as well. So in other words, before the tribulation, we believe Jesus Christ will rapture his church. So when you see this term right here, it's a good sign that you're in the right crowd. Because we always think of it this way. It's not us. It's Jesus Christ. That's what you're going to see in all these terms. It's not us, it's Jesus Christ. Post-tribulation, see, they believe in about going through the tribulation, resisting the Antichrist and his system. See, everything is man-made, man-effort. You notice that? But no, we believe Jesus Christ is going to come before the tribulation. And he's going to, set, and he's going to rapture us before the tribulation. And then after that, then he's going to set up his own reign, his own kingdom. Pre-millennial, before the 1,000-year reign, Jesus Christ is going to come down 
and then he's going to wipe out the Antichrist system, and then he's going to set up his kingdom. So that's the key right here. Millennial means a thousand year. So when will Jesus come? After, or he's not coming at all, or will he come before? See, that's the idea. So we go through this premillennial lens concerning the book of Revelation. And premillennial, it will bring a literal interpretation. What you're going to notice about amillennial and postmillennial is that they will always go through an interpretation format. That's what they're going to do. Metaphorical, figurative. That's how they take the verses. We don't believe in that. We believe in taking it literally, as it says. They will apply, po uh, they will apply this post-millennial, amillennial lens in a spiritual format. They're going to spiritualize verses. They're going to make all the verses figurative, metaphorical. Premillennial, on the other hand, we take the verses literally as they say. Amen. So we just leave it alone as it says. And then if it actually talks about some kind of locust coming out of the pit with a weird looking face and then a weird looking hoofs and it's, it's got scorpion tails, we take it literally. Yeah. We're not going to apply it. Oh, that's referring to the fall of Jerusalem sometime <laughs> when the Roman soldiers came down like locusts and... See, you're really stretching the imagination right here. So that is the format, and I'm going to add this as a bonus, is dispensational. This is why we believe in dispensationalism. Dispensationalism, it goes by a historical grammatical context. Historical grammatic context. In other words, we go by exactly as the word says, and then it's understandable during that history, historical timeline. So by understanding the historical background and literally as it says, that's why we go by this concept. So you'll notice this is definitely the more accurate. If you want to go by these two formats, that's fine. Go ahead. But what you're going to notice is you're going to rely more on yourself to interpret the verses rather than the word of God by itself. So because we go by the word of God by itself, this is why we agree in this format here. It is definitely one of the most feared, hated, and misunderstood, uh, misunderstood books in the whole Bible. This is definitely going to be hated by the Catholic Church. Why? Because the Catholic Church is mentioned throughout the book of Revelation. It will be Satan's church, Satan's bride, Satan's wife, and everything that has to do with Satan that just makes you mad if you're a Catholic. But the Catholic Church has everything to do with Satan, you must understand, throughout Revelation 17 and 18. So because they hate this, a better interpretation would be a post-millennial or amillennial format. They would prefer that kind of notion. So that they can bring in the kingdoms themselves. That they're in the kingdom right now. So the Catholic Church, what kind of interpretation you think they're going to use for Revelation? A, they're going to spiritualize verses. So that's why it's dangerous. If you're at that kind of interpretation revelation, you're on dangerous ground. It's best to leave it as it says what God wants. Okay. So Revelation, it has 22 chapters, 404 verses, and 11,995 words. If you want to write that down, I'll just say it again. 22 chapters. 44, uh, 404 verses and 11,995 words. Scholars call this book the Apocalypse, the Apocalypse. So what's very interesting is that if you go to uh, scholastic studies on the book of Revelation, they will refer to this as apocalyptic, apocalyptic or apocalypse. They use that wording quite often. Yeah. But it's more accurately called Revelation. You might say why. Because apocalypse is, trans, is a transliterated word from Greek. Revelation is a translated word. It's a translated word. So apocalypse would be more of a transliterated word. Okay, so we're going to cover some interesting things concerning the book of Revelation. So what we do know, you're going to hear these terms quite often or sometimes. But you're going to hear these terms, the premillennial, postmillennial, amillennial. But what we also are is uh, we do not believe in this notion of 
So concerning the preterist system, the preterist system believes this notion about the fall of Jerusalem. That's important to understand. So a lot of people have asked me, what do I believe about preterism? I do not believe in preterism. I do not believe in that. That is the enemy camp, the opposite camp of the literal dispensational premillennial approach. Premillennials, they try to apply everything to Nero as the Antichrist and then the Revelation timeline to the fall of Jerusalem. But if you read the word as it says literally, you can see that this is not going to match up unless you spiritualize and make the words figurative. Then you can stretch it to the timeline. 